Welcome to another episode of Stick Shift Stories. Today's episode is special because we're going to be taking a deep look at the Lexus IS300 and we're going to be doing a complete buyer's guide on this model. We're going to take a look at the exterior, the interior, the engines and the options and also along the way tell you some of the common problems that you might run into if you're looking to purchase one of these cars in the second hand market. Stay tuned because this is an episode you won't want to miss. Hey useful videos family, please subscribe to my channel and hit that bell icon so you'll be notified every time I post a new video or buyer's guide. Thank you. The IS300 was known as the Alteza in Japan and was first released to the Japanese market in 1998. The platform for the Alteza was a modified version in use by the Toyota Progre. Engineers at Toyota shortened the wheelbase by 110 millimeters, pushed the front wheels out by 20 millimeters, and the rear wheels out by 25 millimeters. The physical design of the Alteza was finalized and frozen by designer Tomoyasu Nishi in 1996. Engineering for the Alteza project was led by Nobuaki Katayama, a Toyota Motorsports executive who competed in rallies and other races. In the 1990s, he was a big part of Toyota Motorsports, assisting with the World Rally Championship, Sports Car World Championship, and Le Mans Racing. With the Alteza, Katayama wanted to build a smaller, sportier, and more nimble car, one that could take on the German sports sedans head-to-head. -head. Katayama's own Alteza was fitted with a supercharger and stiffer, lowered suspension. The design of the IS300 received critical acclaim and was honored by being Japan's Car of the Year for 1998 through 1999. The exterior design of the IS300 was certainly skewed towards the sporty side of the spectrum. It had a nice rear-wheel drive stance with flared fenders that gave the car a very svelte look. At the rear, the taillights were responsible for starting the obsession with Alteza taillights. The quasi-fastback roofline, chrome exhaust tip, aggressive alloy wheels, and a 105.1 inch wheelbase proved a very good combination. While more busy than offerings from German competitors, the IS300's design paved new roads for Lexus in the USA. It helped establish trends and bring in a younger demographic that may have gravitated towards a 3 Series or Audi A4. Initially, for the 2001 model year, the IS300 was only available as a sedan. But starting in 2002, there were two body styles on offer, a sedan and a wagon variant called the Sport Cross. If the Sport Cross interests you, keep in mind that they are very rare. There was only a total of 3,078 made, with the most popular year being 2002, with 1,958 Sport Cross models being sold. Some common issues you may run into in the used car market include body panels that are misaligned due to neglect, hazy or cloudy headlights due to sun exposure and age, rust in areas where they use chemicals or other snow and ice removing compounds, and in hotter climates, you might notice that the roof, hood, and trunk lid are faded due to the high heat and sun exposure. Like the exterior, the interior also sets some new trends. Buyers could choose between half Alcantara, half leather seating combinations, usually in colors like ivory or black, or full leather seats, depending on options and trim. The instrument cluster was very unique. It sported a chronograph watch style that housed the MPG, ammeter, and coolant temperature gauges inside of the speedometer. Lexus compared the look to a high-tech timepiece. The three-spoke leather-wrapped steering wheel housed the buttons of the E-Shift automatic transmission, similar to Porsche's Tiptronic system. The chrome ball shift knobs were a nice touch, as well as the drilled pedals that were inspired by the head engineer's son, whose car had drilled pedals. Things to be mindful of for the interior include dashboards that can melt or disfigure in the hot sun. This was a defect with many Toyota-built vehicles that were produced in the early to middle 2000s. Remedies include removing the dash, stripping the melted plastics, 
using either acetone or other chemical removers, and finally repainting it using special spray paints. You may be able to remove the melted bits without the dashboard removed, however, it can be costly and it can take a lot of time. Other issues include CD changers and cassette players that break often, and wear on the Alcantara parts of the seats. While Alcantara is certainly grippy, it can pile and wear differently than other materials. Some of the all-leather variants of the seats can split at the seam in the middle of the seat cushion. The first generation IS models were only available as the IS300 in the United States. That's a very good thing because it means they all came with the coveted 2JZ-GE 3 liter dual overhead cam 24 valve straight 6 engine. This engine had VVTI continuously variable valve timing with an output that was respectable for its day, 215 horsepower and 218 pound-feet of torque. According to Lexus, 0-60 was accomplished in 7.3 seconds with the E-Shift automatic transmission. The automatic was the only transmission available for the 2001 model year in the USA, but starting in 2002, a 5-speed manual transmission was available. Note that the Sport Cross never received a manual transmission from the factory. Some owners and enthusiasts have fitted a manual gearbox to the Sport Cross though. Lexus models are known for their reliability and the IS300 is no exception. The engine as well as both of the transmissions are very durable and should last you 200,000 miles or more with normal maintenance. You may however need to change the O2 sensor more frequently than you'd like and you do have to change the timing belt at normal intervals. In terms of options available, the nice thing was that even the basic IS300 was pretty well equipped. However, there were some standout options that you could equip an IS300 with. One of these things was a navigation system that had the screen pop out from the top of the dash. While not necessarily an option, the Sport Cross gave you the added benefit of being able to carry large or bulky items and having the ability to use the fold down rear seats. Additionally, the front passenger seat could be folded all the way flat to give you a work surface or a tray table. There was a Sport Design Edition available from 2003 through 2005 and that included some special items like a Sport Design front grille, Sport Design exhaust, Eurotune suspension on manual models, and a special smoke gray leather interior. Early models also had the availability of the L-Tuned kit, which came in a Series 1 and Series 2 look. The Series 1 was more of a body kit with a different type of grill, whereas the Series 2 gave you sport springs, a sport exhaust system, and a stainless steel tip. So, after all of this information, What's my verdict on the first generation Lexus IS300 or Toyota Altezza? Well, I give this vehicle 9 out of 10 burnouts. It's got a great engine, unique looks, and it's super reliable. Thanks so much for watching. Please hit that like and subscribe button, and we'll see you for the next video.